My question is why am I wearing a jean jacket in 90 degree heat? All right, so today I'm gonna to be taking some photos for the gram. My Instagram is the same as my YouTube username, Twitter, Facebook. I'm gonna pop it in right here. But I figured I would bring you guys along, show you how I get ready when I take photos. I'm really excited to show you guys this foundation routine that I've been doing. It looks especially flawless in photos and just in real life. I feel like this is the most smoothing, kind of blurring foundation combo I've ever had. If you have acne or texture, this is full coverage. It'll cover everything. And on my skin, it just kind of smooths everything out and lasts throughout the day. Typically when I take photos for Instagram, it's during the day. We're not using flash photography. So this face routine isn't for flash photography. Let me know if you guys would want to see a separate video on that. It can be a little bit tricky to find makeup that photographs well. Sometimes in real life, it'll look flawless and then it just doesn't translate as well on camera. So I have already taken pictures in this face combo and it looks good on camera. I'm gonna show you guys how I do my makeup for photos without flash. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do while you're watching, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. All of the products I'm using on my face are listed down below in the description box along with jacket, nail polish, everything else. Let's put makeup on my face. Rule number one for Instagram photos and for life, coffee. So my skin and foundation routine today is gonna be pretty much the exact same what I did for the photo shoot with Elizabeth. because my foundation looked pretty dang good that day. It held up really well and we were out in the heat and the sun. It turned out looking really good in photos as well. So started with the Ulta Beauty Matte Makeup Setting Spray. I already sprayed this on my face. It gives you actually like a glow, <laughs> but it's supposed to help kind of keep you matte throughout the day, control your oil. Right now it has like a tacky feel to it, which I like for putting makeup on top of it. I feel like it sticks a little bit better, but I'm actually gonna go in with a second primer. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Pore Reducing Primer. This I feel like actually blurs your pores or helps too. So I'm just gonna put a tiny bit on it on my T-zone basically. It doesn't make your pores like invisible. If you find something that does, let me know. But definitely helps to like tone them down, fill them in a little bit and blur them out. Wow, I just used like every preposition. So the makeup that I wore in that photo shoot was the Milk Makeup Blur Liquid Foundation. I have a whole review on this. I've been like infatuated with this thing lately. This is in the lightest shade. For whatever reason, the first few times I wore this, it didn't oxidize. And then just this past time I wore it, it majorly oxidized, so I don't know if it was the powder combination that I mixed it with, but today I'm actually gonna mix in a tiny bit of Dermacol 208 just to lighten it a bit so that when it oxidizes, it matches me better. Dermacol on its own looks beautiful in photography if you don't need to be wearing it like 10 plus hours. If you're just gonna be taking photos for a couple hours, this foundation looks beautiful. Complete full coverage, I have a full review on it. It just looks super smooth. The Milk Makeup Foundation on my skin, if you have a lot of texture or acne, it has full coverage and it just smooths out your skin, which is why I like it for photos. This foundation works pretty well with any brush, but I'm gonna use it with the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush and just mix these two together. Don't believe the Milk Makeup has SPF in it, so it should be good for flash photography as well. I haven't tried it for flash. Like I said, I try it and avoid flash photography at all costs. Look at that freaking coverage. This foundation just gives me all the feels. So as you can see, the finish right now is pretty satin dewy. Both of those foundations are. I still have a lot left over on the palette. I probably could have mixed like half of that amount. Both of these foundations are full coverage and go really far, so you need less product than normal. By the way, I'm going for like the jean jacket, red lips kind of look, messy hair, hence it's also like day six hair. Don't tell anyone. It's an extension. Yep. Cool. For under eye concealer, my favorites are the BH Studio Pro Concealer, Tarte Shape Tape, Urban Decay Naked Skin. Those are like my top three. And then also the Collection Cosmetics. This one is harder to get if you're in the US, but it's drugstore in the UK. You can get it off eBay. I've talked about it a ton before. But lately I've just been reaching for this one again. Something about this concealer that is so beautiful. Yesterday I randomly used my F82 by Sigma to blend out my concealer and it actually worked really well. So I'm gonna try that again today. This is obviously a huge brush, but if you just go kind of like over your eye with it, it works. There you go. Powder, whether it be under eye setting powder, face powder, powder is the trickiest thing when it comes to especially flash photography. Like I said, I'm not going to be doing any flash photography today, so I'm not super concerned about it. But I wanted to mention if you are concerned about flash photography, the three kind of ingredients, main ingredients that you want to avoid are zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, and silica. You especially have to look out for that in loose, translucent kind of powders. The one powder like that that's known to do pretty well with flashback is the RCMA No Color Powder. This one typically does not cause flashback, so if you're in the market for a powder 
for flash photography, here you go. So to set my under eyes, I'm gonna use my usual Physicians Formula powders. If I was doing flash, I would not use these because they do contain titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. All right, so this powder I'm in love with. I've talked about it multiple times. This is my favorite way to set this foundation. Definitely helps to control my oil throughout the day. It just looks so smooth and beautiful. This is a Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder in 05. So I use the Morphe sponge, the bottom of this, just to set my entire face. I just really like press it in there and make sure every inch is covered and it ends up looking flawless. So I just basically like coat the bottom of this sponge and the powder. I'm just gonna pounce it on my face. It gives you a little bit of color and coverage. And this is a dry sponge, by the way. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell on camera, but here's the side not set, super dewy, glowy. Here's this side of my face set, very matte, but what I like is that in about an hour, the dew will still kind of come through with this foundation. It won't look totally matte, but it definitely helps to keep my oil under control. I don't bake with this because I don't wipe anything away. I just literally press the powder into my skin. Pro tip, don't wear the shirt that you're gonna wear in photos because you'll have loose powder all over it. All right, now that my base is on there and looking good, we're gonna move on to brows. So for brows lately, I've been going back to the Anastasia dip brow and then for the front of my brows, I'll kind of draw in some like fake lines with this brow liner by Makeup Forever. So I'm gonna do that, hope it goes well. You never really know with brows. I've been especially having trouble lately with my brows. I don't know why. The shape and everything, I'm just like going through one of those phases. All right, not a horrible brow day. That's all you can really ask for in life, not a horrible brow day. I'm gonna go in and draw some of those lines on. Next up, I'm gonna go in with my contour. This is the Kevin Aquan Celestial Bronzing Veil. This is beautiful, mentioned it in Raisin Rejects. I might also bronze with this one today, but I'm just gonna go in with the really light shade right here. Just contour. By the way, this is a Morphe G40. I've been liking this one for contouring lately. And if you get too much or you feel like you need to tone it down, you can always go back in with your brush or sponge and just kind of blend out those edges a little bit. Also get in the tip of my nose with this. Typically I would use the Kat Von D brush. I have no idea where that is though. I can't find it. And then I also go underneath the lip. This just creates a little shadow under there to make your lips look bigger. I think I do want to bronze a little bit. So I'm gonna take the e.l.f. St. Lucia bronzer with my Flower Beauty brush, love this thing. So pretty. I love the tone of this bronzer. So I don't know actually if I wanna do blush today. I'm definitely gonna do highlight, but let's first go in for eyes. So I'm gonna prime using Max Paint Pot and Soft Ochre. I wish you guys could see my skin in real life because it never looks this smooth. Usually in the viewfinder with the lights and stuff, it like kind of smooths out my skin a little bit, but it actually looks like that in real life, which is rare. So I feel like this foundation combo is just great. So for eyes, I'm gonna use the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. I'm just gonna use some of the mattes today just to create like a really basic neutral kind of eye. So I wanna do a red lip. <laughs> so I'm gonna start out with this shade right here, this like orangey one. And just put that into the crease. This palette has been growing on me. I find myself reaching for it more than I thought I was going to. This is one of those palettes that you definitely need a primer for. The MAC Paint Bot is my favorite primer to use this with. If you have hooded lids, this BH brush is like kind of a game changer. It's small enough where it's precise. You can place the product exactly where you want it, but it also blends a little bit. This is number seven. I think you can only get it in a set, but I'll put it in the description box down below. I think I'm gonna go in with this shade right here. And just put that right into the crease. I do draw it a little bit above my crease since I have hooded lids. You gotta kind of create that line since it doesn't exist. I'm gonna be putting on falsies today, so I'm not super concerned with the eyeshadow because usually when your eyes are open, you mostly see the falsies. Would highly recommend wearing false lashes if you're gonna be taking photos. Just make your eyes really pop. I swear false lashes make any makeup look 50 times better. I'm gonna go in and blend that out. So for my lid shade, there's not a matte cream shade in this palette, so I'm gonna go in with the BH Carly Bible palette, one of my favorites. And I'm gonna take this lightest cream shade right here. This one, I love for the lid. I'm just gonna bring this right into the crease and create kind of like a sharp line right there. Eyeshadow's done. I'm debating whether I want to use liner or not today. I'm going to use the Pure Bombshell Lashes, which are one of my favorites. I love these and the Eyelore 121s. Those are like my go-to lashes. These ones, I like how they look without liner on. They have a nice dark band too, so I usually don't need it. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to use 
liner today. For false lashes, actually, I'm gonna go in with highlighter. So I'm gonna mix the two lightest eyeshadow shades in this palette. These are beautiful as face highlighters, especially this shade. So this is the lightest shade on its own. You can see that frickin' sheen. It is so pretty. I actually might just use this shade today. For photos, unless you're gonna be photoshopping the shit out of your face, you kinda have to put on more than you normally would so it shows up how you want it to in photos. On Instagram, I have like three different apps I use to edit my photos. I do use Facetune to help kind of like smooth out your skin a little bit. Most people on Instagram do, it's no secret. I love this shade as a face highlight, so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna apply my false lashes and I'll be right back. All right, so false lashes are on. I'm gonna go in for the lower lash line now. I'm gonna go back in with that first shade that I took. Actually, I think I'm gonna do the second shade actually that we took. Let's go in and blend that on the lower lash line a little bit. Whoa, my mirror is hella far right now. I'm gonna take that shimmery, lightest shade in the palette and use that as an inner corner highlight. So pretty. And last step for eyes, I'm gonna go in for bottom mascara. I use my Wet n Wild Mega Length for this. The wand is perfection. It doesn't transfer down to my concealer. It dries down. All right, so Instagram, kind of hack, because it does take time and coordination to do a photo shoot. You have to get someone to take your photos, you gotta do your makeup, you gotta figure out your outfits, all of that. I definitely like to take advantage of that and get a couple different looks out of it. So typically, I'll do two different lip colors. I'll kind of switch it up. So whatever lightest lip color I'm gonna be wearing, I'll put on first, and then halfway through the photo shoot, I'll switch lips. So if I wanted to do like a red lip today, I would probably put on a nude first with a different outfit, then do an outfit change, then do the red. But I think today I'm actually gonna start out with a red and then switch to like a dark dark either dark purple or almost black color so i'm going to use this matchbox always on liquid lipstick and bang bang i haven't tried this shade yet but the formula of these are freaking awesome by the way before i put on the false lashes i set my whole face with the makeup forever mist and fix this is my favorite setting spray for taking photos for events anytime i need my makeup to full-on stay on this stuff is legit it's awesome oh yeah I always like using liquid lipsticks for photos because you don't have to worry about it like transferring on your teeth. It's gonna stay on your lips. This red shade is so freaking pretty. I feel like it looks a little bit more neon on camera, but in real life, this is like the perfect matte. Ooh, I like this color a lot. Wouldn't be Instagram without a little bit of a glow. I'm gonna use the Maybelline Strobing Liquid just for my chest area. I'm just gonna put this right on my collarbones. All right, so this is the finished look. Basic, but effective. This face makeup should be looking pretty flawless all day. Definitely recommend this foundation and powder combination. Everything I used on my face today will be linked down below in the description box. I think this is gonna be my outfit for the photos. I'm gonna pop on some sunglasses. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can join the Bay Rito family and subscribe. I upload Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. And if you missed the announcement video, 15 days of foundation is coming up September 1st to the 15th. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.